Hi guys and welcome to the Sheffield Wednesday season review. Now if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, we are 10 away I believe from 600, which we can get that before the season starts hopefully, which will be fantastic news. Now, I apologise for the season review being late, a couple of factors there. A, this is only the time I've really had a chance to film it and do so. B, we were waiting on the EFL charge which we've now got but not too sure if we're going to appeal it or not, so we'll find out stuff with that. And see, it's just been a really strange time with the COVID and everything, so it's been difficult to do so. And if, and I will also say, if anyone wondering why it's signs I'm not looking at camera, I have my script here that I've done, which had got some key points from the season. Now, the way I'm going to do this, do this, it's going to be split into. Uh, months, so it's going to have how we did in that month, I go from there. So, let's start with, the, right at the beginning of the season, we were back in a transfer embargo once again. And you're thinking, here we go again, but you looked at who Bruce, Bruce bought in that uh, January bit, you got Iortha, you got Arons, you got, uh, oh, you got something else in, Lazar, and you thought, yeah, great players, so you're thinking, if you can get those kind of players in, fantastic, but we do bring players in, we bring in Borna, Ojibayo, Harris, and backup keeper Paul Jones, now we had the situation, and it all started to go downhill to a point, in terms of the start of the season, when Newcastle was sniffing around Steve Bruce, Steve Bruce was always going to go to Newcastle. He's a Newcastle fan, he's from up there. So it was always going to happen. And there was rumour that we got some sort of compensation, four million, and I think it was a, less, a lot less than that. But it mean it left us with no coaches who came with Bruce and no manager two weeks before the season starts. Up depths, Lee Bullen once again to steady the ship. So we'll see how we do, but being two weeks before the season, manager list was not great. So August comes in, in depth Lee, Lee Bullen, and we still got the transfer window to complete. And we start okay. We play Reading and get off to a good start, a 3 1 win with. Uh, which would ironically be Zhao's last game for us with him again going to Reading. So he scored against the club he was about to join. Uh, Westwood got sent off in that game, which was a shame, so it meant he had to miss some games, so Dawson had to come in. The first three games we win, but then we start with our defensive problem at times to, to a lot to Preston and QPR. We bring in players in the last couple of days of the transfer window. We've been Longo, Murphy on loan, and Bates on loan from Hamburg, which didn't really come to anything with Bates. He never really got a run in the team. September. We have the international break and we get linked with the Crowley brothers, but we bring in Gary Monk, who I said in the past, uh, I didn't want him because of what happened with some of the dealings he had with his agent at uh, Middlesbrough and Leeds. But he was in, so I always said I would back him if he got the job. And that's what I've done. I backed him. But funnily enough, the team we play, uh, the first his first game in charge is against Huddersfield Town, who then bring in the Cowley brothers. So it was both their two things. So it was really interesting. We end up winning that, playing some nice fo football. We pick up a nice draw with Fulham, and we smash Middlesbrough four one. And we're starting to see Stephen Fletcher at his best at well in a Wednesday shirt. And you're thinking, this could go somewhere. The team's looking good and the manager's doing okay. It was a good start for Gary Monk to have this go for him. We go into October and when you smash middle for 4-1 and then go and lose to Hull 1-0... And then have a Stonewall penalty not given. And then we take a lot of chances, but we don't finish them. You start to think it's going to be a long, inconsistent season for Wednesday yet again. 
We beat Wigan, we get a draw against Cardiff, we win against Doak and we draw with Leeds. It was a good October for us and we were looking decent but we still had a very inconsistent way we were in games and we weren't being able to kill games off if we were getting like a 1-0 win. We were really struggling to break teams down to get that second goal or we were breaking them down and then we were not taking chances and that's been the story of our season so far really because that's what we've done all season it's not great because you want your team to finish teams off and stuff but we do get to third at one point in October and there was a bit of a good buzz around the place there were some people still being quite negative about Monk and his appointment and saying they don't like his football but then you actually looked at looked at where we were and it's like third place at one point you think He's doing okay. November. If we could start being consistent, that would be good and we could get a good run going here in a good position in the table. We lose to Blackburn, we get a draw with Swansea, we lose to West Brom, we draw with Birmingham, we beat Charlton 3-1. But again, it just shows you how inconsistent this team is and how it just goes like this we lose Fletcher to an injury and it's not great and we also had the situation where Fletcher was running through a bit more getting the goals and it was really starting to go good and then when when he got injured you felt like it was screwed a little bit because it took a while for him to come back we come into the busy season in December where we seen so far we're thinking we have a bit of hope to see what we could do and it's that whole thing we try and go for it but we don't get the clean sheets that we need we get Westwood injured so Dawson back in there and then we also find out that things have happened with situation with Westwood and the management again and people start bringing it up and it starts to have a bit of a riff with the fans also at this point we get child by the EFL due to the stadium being in the wrong tack bit and also there's a charge against Chancery which we then start to think what's going on how's this going to happen and there was a part of some people that are thinking could this actually be the bit where Chancery actually has to give the club away because he's been charged with fraud or something like that but look at, luckily for us you'll find out later on in the video and we know anyway kind of thing so we get to December we get to the busy part of football calendar now and we're needing to keep players fit and we hope we can get on a good run. We get a win at Brentford who are a very good side but that clean sheet does not happen again. We draw versus uh, we draw versus Derby, a massive 4-0 win away to Nottingham Forest with a Jordan Rose first half hat-trick and you're thinking, right, he can kick on now. He can go to that next level we know he can do. Get there, we can have this all see the best of Jordan Rowe but it doesn't happen does it let's be honest and it's a shame because I've always wanted to see him come good Bristol City we get a draw get and it sees a third over Christmas and people are like could we actually do this and it's normally the case wherever you are at Christmas the rule is normally it's where you're finished but that's not the Wednesday way that's not what we do the first game back we play Stoke and we lose 3-2 and it was woeful defending. We then lose to Cardiff, which was a good December to start with. And then it petered out in typical Wednesday fashion towards the end of December. And going into January did not look good. January. We lose to Hull. We beat Leeds 2-0 and hope we can push on and get a win versus Blackburn, who had not won in ages and get some confidence. But we get battered 5-0 at home as well and we just did not turn up to play and the real it really shows you what happened then and then the slide continued it was 2-1 to Wigan and from being third before Christmas we were in 11th place we signed the crews on loan from Palmer. We signed Josh Windass from uh, Wigan. And we also signed Connor Wickham 
from Crystal Palace. And you're hoping the player can come in and hit the ground running and help us where we needed it. But it was a big fly for us and we just weren't consistent enough with what we were doing, which is the whole thing of this season. We need to be consistent more and that's just not happening. February. We get a draw with Millwall, a draw with Barnsley and a huge problem with Dawson in that Barnsley game to give them the draw. We lose to Luton who at the time were bottom of the league and we just can't seem to go or keep a clean sheet. We get smashed at home versus Reading 3-0. We get a draw with Birmingham 3-3 and we throw... We throw that game away right at the death. We get a win versus chart on the 90th win, hoping we can push on here. But it's difficult. We lose 3-1 to Derby at home. And the team is just struggling for confidence. They're not being able to concentrate near end of games and it's costing us. And we were really, really struggling. And Monk were trying to say there's something not right here, but we need to get it sorted. While the season is going on as well, we had the situation with coronavirus pandemic suddenly happening. And it it started to take a strangle on the whole world as a whole. And then we start to think, is the season going to happen again? Uh, I think in February we had a game versus QPR, which was a FA Cup game. But also it, Dawson made a mistake in that game as well, and it just it felt like Dawson was really st- struggling with confidence. To be fair, March June. So we get stuffed five nil again. And that two five nil drubbings, and we get we are struggling for any form whatsoever. And then there's a pause in the season. The entire country goes into lockdown, so there is no games going on and no training. You, but when thing does happen, you hope that it'll give Monk the pre-season that he never had with the boys and be able to put things in play when it does come to come to round to happening. During this time, Chancery and Kitten Meyer and I can't remember the other one off the top of my head, I think it may be Palmer in players I found not guilty of any wrongdoing, but we're still having to hear the charge from the EFL about the twelve to twenty one point deduction. And we've been in fifteen point if they gave us that at this point this season, we would have been in a huge lot of trouble. We've just really needed to start well in this period where we start back up again. We get game back on the way and we we get a draw versus Nottingham Forest, which was really good to be fair. So we get a draw versus Nottingham Forest, but we do have an issue with some of the players who are going to be out of country tracked after the Bristol City game. Joe Wildman got the number one bottom and pulled off some really crucial save to keep us in that game as well. And it was one of those it was good to see. We played well in the in the next game as well with some good saves. We beat Bristol City 2-1. But after that game, that would only leave us with Lee and New Hugh signing contract attention. And it would see us with Fortieri, Fletcher, Fox, did not sign extensions. Hutch, who was frozen out the team, as well as Winnell. So Fletcher, Fortieri, Fox, Hutch and Winnell all left after that point. And you started to think what it's going to be like and how we do now. So we go into July. And this is crucial because we still don't know what's going on with the EFL charge at this point. Nothing still been said. We lose to West Brom and we played very well in that game. It's a shame cut, but it was another chance, game where we just didn't take our chances. Played really well, had had some chances, but didn't finish them. We lose to Swansea. And thankfully for us, there were some teams near the bottom who weren't doing that well. But we were starting to go even further on the slide as well. We lose to Preston at 3-1 and we just can't seem to keep a clean sheet whatsoever at all. We get a win versus QPR, which is 3-0. And we play some very good football. We took our chances and we did okay. We get a draw versus Huddersfield, which virtually keeps them safe. 
kind of thing. If we ha- was able to finish on challenge, it might have been a different story. We lose 5 3 to Fulham. So, to anyone who would have been just a neutral, it would have been a great game to watch. We were behind in the first half. We get goal back in the second. We get it close to where we're going to make it 3 3. And then we lose our heads once again. And then that leads us with the last game of the season with Neil Warnock now being in charge of Middlesbrough. And we lose that game 2 1. And the season ends was of being in 16th place and still having the EFL charge at this point, still not announced. And we're all wondering what's going to happen, how's it going to happen and how's everything going to go from there. And we get the decision recently, we're going to get minus 12 points which are going to be taken to next season. Charlton are not happy about it, we're going to relegate it due to going into administration and that also means that Barnsley are safe at that point. Derby I believe is also being talked about their EFL charge as well. It has been a roller coaster of a season this year and it's been one of those ones where with everything that's happened to start the season with Steve Bruce, the being at third at Christmas, astronomical slide. We went from third to fifteenth to sixteenth in the end at the end of the season, where we are just like going, what the hell happened there? Then you throw in a global pandemic in the middle of that, and it's been a crazy, crazy season. So, what I think. For next season is, and we're already seeing it, we're signing youth players, we're getting ready for next season. I think we've got to keep Monk and let him build something now. We now know what's going on with the charge, bar any appeal from our, ourselves. But I'm starting to think that we have to start letting Monk build team now. There's too many players who were at Carlos, at Dave Jones at one point, and it needs to change. But thank you for watching this season review. If you've made it this far, well done. It's a 17 minute video pretty much. And I thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. But if you could like this video, share this video, which would help as well. And subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I believe we are only 10 away from 600. And that would be fantastic. Thank you for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.